Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. So it's been a while since we've done one of these, but today we are going to be continuing our exploration into the obscure and detailed world of One Piece by covering the second half of the Vivia Card starter set. Once again, all credit goes to the Library of O'Hara for the translation, the link to which will be in the description below. But let us commence the session with the ever memorable Kuina. Now I find it odd that we didn't actually know this already, but her card reveals that she was 11 years old at the time of her death. But on a more intriguing note, the card does in fact mark Kuina as officially dead. I take special note of that because there are a ton of theories and thoughts out there that do concern Kuina being alive and possibly being Toshigi. And you'd think this piece of information might settle that argument once and for all, but sadly it uh, kind of doesn't. The main problem being that data books have been known to lie to us in the past, as data book Green stated that Sabo was indeed dead, which was of course prior to his reintroduction in the series. So just because Kuina's marked dead here does not mean that she may not be alive later on. Also her favorite food was milk and fried eggs. Mmm, fun. As for her father Koshiro, he is 50 years old and was born on the 4th of May, better known as Star Wars Day. His favorite food is eating watermelons, which is more of an action than a favorite food, but specifically eating watermelons beside the dojo though, so consuming watermelons under any other condition may be highly unacceptable. Although the main point of interest with Koshiro is that his place of origin was not Shimotsuki Village where his dojo is, but rather somewhere else in East Blue, which is very interesting because it would imply that he is not from Wano, as many popular theories may be thinking at the moment. Speaking of intriguing origins though, apparently Buggy the Clown was born somewhere in the Grand Line, which I guess makes a lot of sense because he was recruited on Roger's journey, but then again so was Shanks and he's from West Blue. So I suppose Buggy just stayed in East Blue after Roger's execution then, for a whole 22 years. And this might sound crazy, but all memes aside, it really does make me wonder if there was a point where Buggy was actually decently powerful and living the easy life in East Blue for 20 years just made him incredibly soft. Also I should note that this is Buggy's pre-time skip card, so it doesn't feature anything about being a warlord or the pirate dispatch squad. Instead, it gives us much, much more important information, being that Buggy's favorite food is hot dogs. Om nom nom nom. Nom. Moving to Buggy's crew, we have Mr. Moji, who is 29 years old, the same age as me recording this video currently, and seeing where he is in life versus where I am in life definitely makes me feel that a little bit better about my life choices. Also his favorite food is pickles. Ugh, who does that? Unlike his captain though, Moji's home is somewhere in East Blue, and he is surprisingly tall, comprising 197 centimeters. And finally, Moji's card also confirms that he does not have a bounty. Moji's lion Richie also gets his own feature, but the only new information we learn about him is that his favorite food is meat. No particular kind of meat style of cooking or favored side dishes, just plain old meat. His height is also stated as being around two meters, purposely vague, I guess, because he's a very, very inconsistent kitty when it comes to his size in the series. Rounding out the buggy pirates is Kabaji. And while this is not new information, he is listed as the chief of staff of the buggy pirates, which I did not know, so hey, that's cool. He is 34 years old, once again, making me feel great about my life choices. And he also hails from East Blue, with his favorite food being delicious popcorn. Very carnival-like. Actually, all of the buggy pirates seem to favor carnival food, except for Pickle Dude. And here we also have Mayor Boodle who loves salmon and is apparently 75 years old. That's actually way older than I thought he was and makes me feel even worse about that one time where Luffy smashed his head into a wall. Although I do have to say all the respect in the world for a 75 year old man who decided to stand up to a bunch of pirates on his own. But you know who's even older? Shushu. Well in dog years anyway, Shushu is 14 years old which equates to about 78 years of age. And some interesting facts about Shushu. Apparently he has no blood type because he's a dog, which is odd. I always thought the dogs had blood, but I guess I was wrong. Also, you'll never guess what his favorite food is. It's dog food. All right, now we move to a section on characters who weren't deemed important enough to receive their own card. So they very much have more condensed data files and we find ourselves starting with Whoop Slap and wouldn't you know it, we didn't learn a single new thing about him. So we're going to slap him with the boring stamp. The Lord of the Coast also makes an appearance here and the main thing we learn about him is that his birthday is on September 14th. And it's really nice to know that Sea Kings have birthdays. I can just imagine them gathering for a little get together with party hats and ice cream cake. Then there's Anjo, who is one of the pirates present for Roger's execution and one of many who was is very much moved and inspired by his words. Interestingly enough, he also shares a birthday with the Pirate King, being January 1st. Now, as for one of my personal favorite characters covered in this edition, it's Monstar, spelt M-O-N-S-T-A-R, rather than Monster. So if you look very carefully, this is the guy who was with the Red Hair Pirates in Makino's bar, but it turns out he's from East Blue. So it would seem that at some stage, the Red Hair Pirates just came across him and he joined right on up. It's unconfirmed if this is the same monkey we've seen with them in more modern times, but it's extraordinarily likely. Also, his birthday is on November 20th, 21st, the very same day as alleged singer Carly Rae Jepsen. Going a bit more obscure, there are two characters from Fuchsia Village detailed here, being Gyoru the fishmonger and Chikgen, his wife, who quote unquote, helps him at the shop, neat. They were both born on the 7th of March and the 8th of February respectively, and while no age was given, I'm going to go ahead and say 
old. Moving along, we have three characters who you're all probably quite familiar with, and their names were actually revealed in a previous starter book, Blue I think it was, but I'd long since forgotten all of that, so here we have Hippocor, Peppercor, and Popocor. And what the Vivia card data book reveals is that these fine gents are actually triplets, and they were all born on September 2nd in East Blue. Getting close to the end now, but we have some new information on Soro, who if you've forgotten was Helmeppo's pet wolf that Zoro killed in Shellstown, and the whole reason why he was imprisoned on the wood thing. So there you go, if anybody ever says that nobody dies in one piece before Ace, let's all just remember this innocent yet ravenous and very dangerous wolf. And just a side note on that, very interestingly, in the manga Soro gets slashed, you know, like a swordsman might deal with something, but in the anime Zoro actually throws a stool at him, and well that's apparently enough to end Soro, which is a death so ridiculous it's almost as bad as someone being killed by falling down some stairs. In any case, what was the point of this again? <laughs> All right, Soro was born on November 22nd in East Blue, but he doesn't have a birthday anymore due to the whole death thing. And finally, we have the incredibly obscure Mikio Ito, a man who has only ever appeared in wanted posters worth a whopping 1 million yen. That's right, not berries, this guy is actually worth 1 million yen. This is because Mikio Ito is a real person and was an assistant with Oda on the manga series Roroni Kenshin. But the new information revealed about him in Vivia Card is that his birthday is on March 26th, which I guess may or may not be his real life birthday, and and his hometown is East Blue. But that pretty much does it for this edition of One Piece Vivia Card. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of your amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items, with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on this wonderful information. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.